The Third Battle of the Isonzo was fought from 18 October through the 4th of November 1915 between the armies of Italy and Austria-Hungary. Chapter 1: Background. This battle was a part of World War 1. The first move was made in Italy on the eastern sector because this was their third attack that year. It was named as the Third Battle of the Isonzo. After roughly two and a half months of reprieve to recuperate from the casualties incurred from frontal assaults from the First and Second Battle of the Isonzo, Luigi Cadorna, Italian commander-in-chief, understood that artillery played a fundamental role on the front and brought the total number to 1,250 pieces. As well as improving artillery, the Italian army was also issued Adrian helmets, which proved useful in some situations but overall ineffective. The main objectives were to take the Austro Hungarian bridgeheads at Bavk, Tolmin, and the town of Gorizia. Cadorna's tactic, of deploying his forces evenly along the entire Soka, proved indecisive, and the Austro Hungarians took advantage of this by concentrating their firepower in certain areas. Specifically, the two objectives of the attack were Mount Sabatino and Mount San Michel. Chapter 2 Location This took place on the Austro Hungarian side of the border between Austria Hungary and Italy. The battle is named for the river that it was fought on, as well as the previous battles and the many that would eventually follow. Unfortunately for the Italians, it was not a prime location for attack maneuvers, since it had mountainous terrain on both sides. It also had frequently flooded banks. However, it was chosen because the Austro-Hungarian side had control of most of the other areas in the Isonzo region. Chapter 3, Lattle Due to extensive artillery barrages, the Italians were able to advance to Plave near Canal Obsosi, beneath the southern end of the Banzis Plateau, and on Mount San Michel on the Crass Plateau in an attempt to outflank those forces defending Gorizia. The plateau near San Michel was the scene of heavy attacks and counter-attacks involving the Italian Third Army, and Austro-Hungarian reinforcements from the Eastern and Balkan fronts under the command of Svetozar Borovic, both sides suffered heavy casualties. Thanks to the low profile held by Borovic's forces, the Austro-Hungarians were able to hold their positions despite heavy casualties, which were dwarfed by those of the Italian army. This battle proved Borovic's tactical brilliance despite the limited scope of the front. The lull in action lasted barely two weeks at which time the Italian offensive started anew. The Italians made some progress before they were eventually forced back by the Austro-Hungarians. Although the 2nd Italian Army had possession of Mount Sabatino for a brief period of time, they were countered by the Austro-Hungarians. The 3rd Army was able to approach Mount San Michel, but were met with machine gun fire when attempting to sneak around the flank that was guarding Gorizia. The Austro-Hungarians did not lose as many men during this, but proportionally, each side suffered similar losses. Chapter 4 Criticism of Luigi Cadorna Luigi Cadorna was a well-known man throughout Italy for his achievements and background, however, because of the failures the Italians suffered during World War I, Luigi Cadorna received quite a bit of negative feedback. His poor leadership skills led to many deserters during and after the battles of the Isonzo. He assumed that the morale of Italian soldiers would win the battles at the end of the day. It was not until this third battle that he actually considered the sizes of troops and the amount of gunpower they possessed. Dot because he concentrated his attacks in very small areas, the Austro Hungarians were able to do the same exact thing, therefore, there was literally no advantage besides the fact that Cadorna had brought a few more troops in. However, because of the terrain and the area of the attack, the larger numbers also did not do the Italians much good. Chapter 5 Aftermath. Cadorna decided to attack again a week later, starting the Fourth Battle of the Isonzo. However, it was not until the 6th that the Italians would gain any ground and establish a presence at Gorizia. 